Hey everybody, welcome back to another video and I hope you enjoyed the previous two videos of the Ironman road trip and then also a bit of the race experience itself. But in this video, I want to share with you my personal experience of doing an Ironman and also the build up of training for an Ironman or preparing for an Ironman for the past seven years that I've been in a wheelchair. So before I share my experience with you guys, I just want to thank everyone that has been a part of this whole journey. Friends and family and coaches, people on YouTube. And I know that this video and this short little message of saying thank you does not do it justice. But every time that I get the opportunity to thank people, I just want to make use of that. So thank you for making my dreams become a reality. You know, so if I look back on my seven year journey to doing an Ironman and the reason that I say seven years is because I wasn't training for seven years. Seven years is the amount of time that I've been in a wheelchair. So the dream started seven years ago and that's when I had to learn how to swim, building my own hand cycle, building my own racing chair and then doing my first Ironman. So that was the path that I had to walk or roll to do an Ironman. Also, another thing that really weighed down on me is because I have done, you know, three or four half Ironman. And then also, I entered for the full Ironman to do that in 2020. But the problem came when COVID hit and they postponed the Ironman, not once, but twice. So I have been training and I was ready for the event twice before they cancelled, before they postponed it, before I got the opportunity to actually do this. Now, I know I'm going a bit on a rant. But the point is, here towards the end, in September, October of 2021, just before I did this, you know, my first Ironman, my first full one, it really got to me. The mental side of it really got to me. Training 15 to 20 hours a week, mostly alone, really got to me. Because training for an Ironman is not easy. I'll be honest with you, this was the most difficult thing for me to do in my whole sporting career and the reason for that is because Ironman it you need consistency week in week out you need to show up it's not something you just wing or something you just do you know because you feel like it you really have to commit to this you know I think the idea of doing an Ironman sounds nice but it is really harder than what I thought it would be when I started this journey but I'm so glad that I did it because it was the most rewarding thing to actually roll over that finish line and, you know, working so hard for something. And it's really a dream come true. So I really love the process of training for it. I really love the journey of doing an Ironman. And if you would ask me if I'll do it again, the short answer is absolutely yes. Go and do it. It's amazing. You won't regret it. But it is definitely going to take the most out of you. And it's going to push you further than you ever thought that you can go. So these are unashamedly probably the two most uninteresting crackers I've ever made. As I was preparing for the Ironman, I was spending time with the Lord in the morning and he directed my attention to Hebrews 12. Now Hebrews 12 talks about the, the race of faith, how we all have a race to run that the Lord sets us upon uh, like a journey in our life. Just as Jesus had to endure the cross, but he set his focus on the joy set before him to sit at the right hand of God. So. When I read this, I knew the Lord was saying that it's not going to be an easy day. But I mean, I wasn't expecting it to be easy because it's an Iron Man. Uh, no Iron Man is going to be easy. But when he told me that, you know, that I have this race set before me and I need to run it with endurance and need to keep my eyes on Jesus, that's when I really knew, okay, this is really going to be a tough day looking at the weather prediction. I just knew I was in for, for something. Now, as the day began, uh, we checked in our bikes the morning and the race director already came to me and said, look, the weather is not looking great. We're going to minimize the swim from a 3.8 kilometer swim 
to a 700 meter swim. Now that's about 20% of what we're supposed to do. And a few minutes before we start the race, the race director came and said, look, we're making it 380 meters. That's 10% of what the swim is supposed to be. And I was getting ready. I put on my wetsuit and I was on the beach at the start line. And the race director came to me and said, look, we're not going to allow you to swim today. It's too dangerous. The conditions are just too hectic. So right at that moment, I was a bit disappointed because I came there to do a full Ironman. And if you've been following my journey, looking at Instagram and YouTube and stuff, you'll know that I spent a lot of time preparing for my swim. So it is quite, you know, heartbreaking to, uh, to not swim because I've prepared so much and I really wanted to do it. But I just believe that the Lord has a different plan for that day, for my Ironman, for that race that he set before me. So swim got cancelled for me. There were some people that they allowed to swim, but also not everyone. And um, looking at the conditions of the water and hearing the stories afterwards, that even in 380 meters, some people did not make the swim cut off. Now that is quite frightening that you've trained so hard and you can't even swim, you know, 380 meters um, and then you get pulled out of your race. So after hearing that, there was some relief and um, I'm very grateful that they did make that decision for me, probably because I would have gone and I would have swam. We went into transition number one, got on the bike and then I waited probably about an hour and a half because I needed to wait for, this, for the swimmers to finish and the rollout to begin and then I can start cycling. Um, the cycle was, mentally it was probably my best cycle I've ever had. Um, I averaged 24 kilometers an hour over 180 k's in uh, not a flat course, it's fairly hilly, but the most extreme wind I've ever ridden in in six years of, of cycling and doing the sport. So after, you know, finishing that in seven, just over seven hours, I was really happy. I felt really good. Mentally, I was on top of my game. Physically, I could not feel better. Um, but I must be honest with you, I did struggle around the turnaround mark. At 90 Ks, you get a turnaround point. At about 110 Ks, I really hit a wall where it really got tough. Mentally, it really got tough. Physically, I was feeling good, but that was after, you know, five hours of cycling in the wind, uh, in those bad conditions. So mentally, it really got to me at 110 Ks. At about 170 Ks, that's when it hit me again. Uh, 10 kilometers before the end, that's when it just feels like this never ending you know, bike ride. It just feels like the end is not coming near. The wind was probably on its worst of the day. You're looking at about 6 or 7 p.m. Was it that late? You're looking at about 4 p.m. in the day when the wind was like at its worst. So I started off on my run feeling exceptionally bad because you bent over, all the blood flows to your head. My arms felt heavy. I was nauseous. I was hungry. I was tired. I was thirsty. I just had like this whole list of complaints going on when I started my run. And um, the run course is a four loop course. And you start out with the most hectic hill I've ever done in a racing chair. Now, I remember I had some complications on the run where the grip on my gloves and on the push rims we're a bit worn out. Now, I didn't check that before the race and that is completely my mistake. But the wind was just pumping still and um, we just had to push through. There was just like no turning back at this point. You just want to finish. It's dark. And um, that was quite a, you know, a mentally a very, very tough spot for me to be in. To know that there's no way turning back. You need to push through. You need to go on with what you're doing right now. Um, but it's just like that Hebrews 12 uh, points out that for the joy set before me, I could endure that race. And I just hang on to, to those scriptures during those times. And it was incredible to feel that the presence of the Lord at that moment, just knowing that I must just endure this, this race set before me, because there is joy on the other side. And I just really love that, that, that spiritual a journey that it was in this race was just unparalleled to anything that I've ever experienced. 
And as I was finishing my race, I remember coming to like the last kilometer or so, and I just felt the Lord tell me, as I said, that Olve, no matter how tough it gets, no matter how difficult it gets, I will always do what I've promised you, and I will always fulfill my word. And that was just so comforting, and I just felt so loved at that stage that all this training, all this preparation, everything going into that moment that the Lord is faithful. And I remember finishing and realizing that seven years ago, I was in the very same city in rehabilitation just after my accident, in a place where there was so much hurt and pain and disappointment and confusion of being paralyzed, freshly paralyzed, being, you know, in this situation, in this hospital, in this wheelchair, and just having so many questions to the Lord that why is this happening to me? And I had a wound that I carried with me for seven years that when I go back to that place, to Port Elizabeth, I used to be reminded of that time, of that very dark, depressing, hurtful place that I was in. And it was so amazing to see how faithful is the Lord. He took me back seven years later to claim victory in a town, in a place where I had so much hurt. And now we claimed victory of doing one of the world's most difficult um, athletic events in the world. And that is just incredible. A place where I was broken and destroyed. The Lord took me back and he gave me victory in that area. And I cannot describe to you the peace that I felt. That it's almost like I've been released of all that pain and all that trauma of seven years building up. Just by doing this one event. Just by doing an Ironman. Something I've dreamed of doing for the past seven years since I've you know, become paralyzed. It's very difficult to put it in words what this means to me. What a race means to me. What an event means to me. But what I do feel is that the Lord is writing a story that these testimonies that I give, these events that I do, these stories that I tell, He's busy writing a prophetic story of my life. And I believe that this is going to play into something much bigger, something that I cannot even comprehend at the moment. But I just know that it's important to share these testimonies, share these races, share these experiences no matter, you know, what the reaction is or stuff, it's really important that I just get it out there. Because one day, you know, I might be looking back at this. People might be looking back at this. And it's so important that it's all documented. So I guess also, I'm getting very deep and philosophical right now. But that is why it's so important for me actually to create these videos, to share these things with you. Because... I believe it's forming part of something so much bigger that I cannot even comprehend right now. But I'm just being faithful with the little bit, the small piece of the puzzle that I think that I'm adding to it. So with that all said, I just want to thank you for watching, subscribing, supporting, and just coming along on this whole journey. Whatever it is, whatever the Lord is doing, whatever story He's writing, I just know it's so much bigger than, than just me. Um, honestly, I am just a pawn in the, the bigger scheme of things. I'm just willing to be used by the Lord. And that gives me the greatest pleasure. But thank you for following along. Thank you for supporting. Even though we might not even know where it's going, you know, most of the time. But thanks for watching. Thank you for coming along. And I'll see you soon for another video.